Hi guys, I'm Wiley. And I'm Trin. And we're back again with some more guests. My name is Lydia Pastor. I'm in grade 12 and I'm the senior valedictorian. My name's Sarah Enright. I'm a senior and I'm the other senior valedictorian. Awesome. Awesome. So how long have you guys known that you're the senior valedictorians? Um, so sophomore year, when ranking first came out, I was actually ranked number two. Wow. So I did not know that I was the valedictorian until about, um, I believe it was January of sophomore year. They re-ranked and I was number one. So I was pretty stoked nice. about that. Mm-hmm. I had always been valedictorian and I kind of always knew I was going to aim for that. Uh, you get your class ranked sophomore year, so that's when you really know, and then mm-hmm. you just have to maintain it for the next two or so years. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. So what exactly is valedictorian? Like, what does being valedictorian mean? So being valedictorian, um, they determine that based on your college core GPA. Mm-hmm. So that would be all the core classes that you take in high school and the GPAs associated with that on a weighted scale. So uh, for Sarah and I, I know our college core GPAs are 5.0. And um, you just have to have a higher GPA than the rest of your graduating class, I believe, to be named um, valedictorian. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Awesome, awesome. What classes are you guys have you guys taken that have helped? Um, I've taken just for a summary. I've taken about thirteen AP classes, and I'm pretty much only take honors classes now. Um, there are some other requirements that are like specific to College Core that you need to really have a high. Uh, college core GPA is that you need to be high up in a like world language class so you Mm -hmm. pretty much have to get through an AP of that Um, and then you also have to take a weighted fine art or CTE um, which I have both I think now but I got mine from doing AP computer science principles. Cool. Nice. Yeah everything that Sarah said I think we had to be really conscious of our GPAs throughout the four years. Um, I know for example that I was uh, staying away from all the unweighted electives which in retrospect, I kind of regret. I wish I had taken some fun classes like choir, like like ceramics, I guess. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Um, I just feel like you have to be really conscious about what classes you're taking, how you're planning them over the course of four years. And um, yeah, similar to Sarah, I'm taking 12. I took 12 AP classes. This year, I'm taking six. Um, and yeah, that's yeah. pretty much how you plan your four years, I suppose. Awesome. Uh, what have been your guys' favorite AP classes? Hmm. If there is such thing. <laughs> um, so my f- one of my favorite AP classes have always been like AP computer science because mm-hmm. that's what I want to go into. Mm-hmm. So it's more interesting when you're learning something that you like. Um, and then one class I did really like, I don't know what I like. I have always had a thing for history. So I like doing AP US history. Uh, but definitely I think that was helped by the fact that I had like COVID workload for part of the year for those. <laughs> so it felt less stressful. For sure. I think one of my favorite AP classes was AP Psych. Um, I didn't know that I wanted to major in neuroscience until I took AP Psych. So I always thought I was going to do something biochem or like biotech. Um, Then I took AP Psych with Mr. Marquez. It was the best class ever. It's so much fun. It's amazing. It was online last year, though, which is a bummer. Uh, I didn't get the full AP Psych experience, (laughs) but um, the content of that class was really interesting. I feel like the AP style of it really helped to deliver the material in like a vocab sort of oriented way I like that a lot Mm -hmm. yeah like compared to last year like AP psych was a really great AP class and I was like wow I guess AP classes aren't that bad so I decided (laughs) to take more this year it was a bad decision Uh oh (laughs) um anyway so what are some things like roadblocks that you've come across in like preparing for AP tests or maintaining um 5.0 GPAs Mm. all right I had a pretty easy experience. That kind of sounds bad. Um, <laughs> I know. I'm like, yeah, I, I mean, I think the biggest thing for being like valedictorian, if you're really aiming for it, is just knowing what courses you have to take and planning mm-hmm. them ahead of time. And then if you have the work ethic where you know you can maintain A's in a class, then it's not too bad. But that's from my personal experience, which may be skewed. Um, I would say like out of any AP classes that I've struggled with, it's probably like your AP physics is like my AP physics two this year. I have an A in it right now, but oh my God, do I not like I'm terrified every time I take a test in that class. Um, So it's just kind of figuring out which courses you need to handle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think in terms of AP exam prep, I was pretty um, diligent about doing my homework all year. And so because I did my homework as it came and instead of cramming at the very end, I was able to take the tests with a lot of confidence. 
Um, for the AP exams, though, in May, I tend to brain dump. So I like to take everything from uh, the whole class and dump it onto a sheet of paper and then mm. review that the night before the exam. And that's helped me. Um, I think I have an average of fours and fives. Yeah, all fives to fours, I believe. Um, roadblocks, though, AP World History was my toughest class ever. It didn't help that the teacher was actually gone for half the year. Um, but I feel like it prepared me. I think every roadblock you meet in an AP mm -hmm. course is there to prep you uh, for the future roadblocks that you might encounter, like those higher level, level physics courses. Um, AP Calc this year is a beast for me. Oh my gosh. Um, but yeah, everything that you learn in prior AP courses uh, will set you up with the knowledge and foundations to succeed in the later ones. Mm -hmm. Awesome. That's so cool. Um, are there any AP classes that you've learned stuff from that you would recommend to other people, like based on what you've learned or what you've been able to take away from it? Hmm. So I will say it's not my favorite course. Um, well, I actually enjoyed it a decent amount. I think AP Lang is probably one of the most versatile AP courses. If you're, regardless of what you want to do, you're probably going to need the credit for English if you want to go into college. And even if you don't, like the writing skills it teaches you are very valuable. Mm -hmm. And then personally, if you're really interested, just take any AP in like a subject you're interested. Like I did computer science. If they had an AP art history course, I would take it. Just like I, areas, they have a lot of good electives where you can really investigate. Like Lydia mentioned with psych or something else like mm -hmm. that. Yeah, history is definitely not my strong suit, but I feel like taking those history classes really set me up to do well in like AP Lit and AP Lang, where I was able to contextualize a lot of my essays with what I learned in the history courses. Uh, so even though they weren't necessarily my favorite, I definitely used a lot of the material from those. Uh, I think AP Bio was another huge one that I absolutely loved. It's a lot of content, so just be prepared for that. Um, you have a really nice notebook that Ms. Briarton helps you create throughout the year that you actually use for AP exam prep. So it's like your built-in study guide. Um, and that, I think, set me up for a lot of the higher level um, science classes. I know that I'm confident for like college level science courses now that I've taken that. Um, those would be my recommendations. I think an AP language class. So I'm fluent in French. I was, um, I'm was i a citizen of France, and so I speak French at home. Mm -hmm. And I took AP French thinking, oh, this will be a breeze, right? I'll get a, an A easy. Um, but it's actually it was actually very challenging for me because I didn't know how to read and write uh, very well. And so I think taking classes, just like Sarah said, in areas that you're comfortable in will help you push your knowledge in that um, subject mm -hmm. to be even better than you had originally imagined you were. That's awesome. Uh, do you guys have any final advice for anyone that may be studying for AP exams or wanting to take any AP classes? Um, don't overexert yourself. I mean, I get the importance of getting a four or five on an exam, but if it's going to come at the cost of like years of you having to get over the amount of work you put yeah. into it, it's not worth the burnout. So make sure you take care of yourself when you're taking them because that's really important. Yeah, I was going to comment on that too. Um, just even in terms of the valedictorianship, not even just the APs, you need to pace yourself. I'm definitely a sprinter uh, and everyone tells me it's a marathon, not a sprint. And so I tend to burn out in April and um, March, April, May, those months. It is exhausting towards the end if you don't pace yourself, especially in senior mm -hmm. year with all the college applications, all the interviews you have to do. You get to a point where you hit a wall and you can't really move past that wall unless you know the tools to take care of yourself and to maybe sometimes put school second in order to um, best care for your mental health, your physical health. It's very, very important to pace yourself. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Um, um, I think that's all we have for you guys today. Uh, thank you so much for coming down. We really enjoyed being able to talk to you guys about this. Yeah, thank you for all that advice. I'm definitely going to use that <laughs> for sure. Thank you for having us. Yeah, I appreciate it. Yeah. All right, and uh, now we're on to announcements. So, a driving permit seminar class is scheduled for Tuesday, May 3rd from 4.15 p.m. to 7.15 p.m. The, instructor, the in, in, instructor will review the rules of the road and administer the permit test. Passing students will receive certificates of completion to present to the MVD for a driving permit. Registration forms are required and available in the bookstore. The cost is $25 online or $30 in the bookstore. Students must be 15 and a half years of age by the date of the class and must bring their original birth certificate or passport plus student ID card to the bookstore when registering for the class. Register early to get your spot in the class. 
Do you have a talent? Do you want it to win a $100 gift card? Then sign up for the RMHS Talent Show on May 3rd. Looking for all acts from singing to dancing to juggling to group numbers to stand-up comedy and anything in between. First come, first serve, so sign up now. You must be a Red Mountain student in order to participate, and there will be a mandatory rehearsal on May 2nd at 3.30 p.m. in the auditorium. The show will be Tuesday, May 3rd at 7 p.m. See Mr. Erickson in room 404 with any questions. Attention seniors, Shepherd Junior High would like to build an alumni graduation wall. If you attended Shepherd, stop by the Commons and drop off a graduation announcement. Class of 2023 and 2024 students, are you interested in local government? Would you like to get to know the mayor and your city council members? Would you like to meet teens from other Mesa schools? Then the Mayor's Youth Committee is a program for you. The Mayor's Youth Committee is an elect group of juniors and seniors from across Mesa who meet one to two times a month to learn about the ins and outs of city government. In addition to making great new friends and learning about your community, completion of the program includes a letter of recommendation from Mayor John Giles something i don't know yeah john John giles to bolster your college or scholarship applications if you're interested request an application asap by emailing miss sweet at lmsweet at mpsaz.org and the applications are due thursday may 5th red mountain choir invites you to fat cats on thursday april 21st from 4 to 8 p.m for a fundraising night just to mention or wait no just mention us and purchase one of our special packages to send 20% of your receipt back to us. More info on the Red Mountain Choir Instagram at Red Mountain Choir. And attention seniors, have you been saving your Red Mountain change for the past few years? Well, bring the, well, we have the drawing just for you. Bring your Red Mountain Way coins to the change exchange in the comments to enter for a drawing to win one of these excellent gifts. A 20, tw- wait a minute, a 21 <laughs> through 22 yearbook, gift cards, and more. A, um, each Red Mountain Change gets a ticket to enter, and you get a cool gift just for entering. Entries are taken today through Friday, April 22nd, with the dr- and the drawing will be held on April 22nd at the end of school. Great news, JROTC is still offering dual, en- dual enrollment credits for students who complete four years. Students can earn college credit towards a certificate in organizational leadership through MCC. Interested in the military? We can help you get a rank up in any branch of service. Stop by the JROTC building or email Major Cortez. The Native American Club offers a friendly social circle for students to learn about Native Indigenous cultures as well as to edu- educate well, the Educate. school community <laughs> at large. Club meetings are every Thursday during fifth lunch in Miss Carl Patkins' room 242. Students with fourth lunch see Miss K or Miss Carl in room 240 for a pass. Are you interested in different cultures? Do you like sampling foods from various ethnic cuisines do you enjoy learning about cultural holidays traditions mythology and customs do you dream of international travel if so the cultural ambassadors club is the club for you club meetings are every thursday from 3 30 to 4 30 p.m in miss curl patkins room 242 see you there interested in politics social activism junior states of america is for you Come meet fellow passionate students who are looking to make a difference in the world around us. Our group is nonpartisan and focused on restoring civil discourse, and all viewpoints are welcome. We meet every Thursday in room 613 after school, and we'll see you there. Club Diversity will have meetings this Friday in the auditorium at 1130 and 1245. Please come and see the great things that Club D will be doing this school year. Disneyland, anyone? And uh, that's it for the announcements today. Yeah, that's all. And we'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye. Bye. Peace.